Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Lab video on measuring ambient temperature. In this video, we'll discuss some design techniques for measuring ambient temperature and cover some example designs. By the end, you'll be able to make effective design and layout decisions for measuring ambient temperature. What do we mean by ambient temperature? In the context of integrated circuits and electronics, the term ambient temperature is most often used to refer to the temperature of the environment surrounding the system being designed. As an example, when monitoring the temperature of a single component or a PCB, ambient temperature may be used as a reference to the temperature inside the case or enclosure that the board is located in. When controlling an HVAC, ambient temperature could be used to refer to the temperature of the room or building that the thermostat is located in. To better understand ambient temperature measurements, we need to understand the thermal characteristics of the ambient system and their relationship to each other. The most important of these is the concept of thermal mass, which is the ability of a system to store energy as heat. This depends on both the amount of mass and types of material in the thermal system. In most cases, we have an ambient environment that has significantly greater thermal mass than the system we are using to monitor it. If the ambient temperature is more than the system temperature, heat flows from the ambient environment causing the system to warm up. If the ambient temperature is less than the system temperature, the heat flows to the ambient environment causing the system to cool. In other words, whether our system gains or loses heat energy to the ambient environment, we do not expect the ambient temperature to change much because of it. In effect, the ambient environment acts as a reservoir for our heat energy. In the absence of other effects, the elements in our system would eventually settle to the exact same temperature as the ambient environment. This state of thermal equilibrium with ambient is exactly what we want for our sensing element. There are some challenges in obtaining thermal equilibrium of a sensor with the ambient environment. When considering the temperature of the air surrounding a sensing element, the primary method of heat transfer is convection, shown as many waves. We cannot control the speed of convection unless force devices, such as a fan, is used. However, that isn't what we want to do when measuring ambient temperature. There are always other conductive paths as well as convection paths for heat around the sensing element. For the sensor to measure the ambient environment correctly, we would like to minimize the effects from these paths. The sensing element isn't the only thing exchanging heat with the ambient environment. All the mass of our board, including copper traces and pores, are also paths for convection and can act as a path for thermal energy to the sensing element. This extra thermal mass becomes a problem, as other active devices on our board can transfer heat to our sensor directly via convection or by conducting heat through the shared traces on the board itself. Along with the devices, there's also the self-heating effect of the sensor. Since all of the temperature sensors we are discussing consume some amount of current, there will always be generation of heat from within the sensor. When the application depends on high accuracy though, a current consumption in the order of microamps can be a source of non-negligible error. Without proper consideration, these heating sources, combined with self-heating, are enough to drive the steady state temperature reading of our sensor well above the ambient temperature. So how can we best manage these additional heat sources? As a first step, we can try shrinking the amount of thermal mass surrounding our sensing element. This includes minimizing conductive paths between the heat generating device on our board and will reduce the heat loss by our sensor to any cooler adjacent mass, effectively reducing the thermal mass of our sensor. Additionally, we will want to keep our active devices as far as possible from our sensor. Doing this minimizes both convection and conduction from the hotter components on the board to our sensor. Finally, we need to reduce the error from self-heating, which can be done either through calibration or by using lower power modes if available for the sensor. For IC temperature sensors, this would be equivalent to sampling less frequently or using shutdown mode between readings. Let's look at some examples about how we can place our sensor on a board for ambient measurements. For best results, consider using a PCB cutaway around your temperature sensor in order to better isolate the temperature sensor from conducting heat through the board and to reduce the thermal mass surrounding the sensing element for fast response. If possible, a perforated section can also provide good isolation, and if required, it can be separated and used at even greater distances from the rest of the board. For minimal thermal mass, you may also use a flexible board design like those shown. Sensors mounted on a flex PCB can show significantly better thermal response to ambient environment. How far is far enough for a sensor to be well isolated? The answer depends on a few things, including the ambient environment temperature, 
the temperature of the heat generating IC on the rest of the board, and the direction and magnitude of airflow across the board. This includes both forced air and natural airflow from temperature gradients surrounding the system. The infrared simulation shown on the screen is for a test board containing only a power resistor and a high accuracy digital temperature sensor. The power resistor is ran to around 90 degrees Celsius during the time of the image. Even at a distance of 60 mils, there is still residual heat convection from the power resistor. For this reason, we will recommend a distance of 1200 mils or roughly 38 millimeters, allowing for temperature from components this hot to dissipate. The table shows sample recommended distances for various temperatures. In general, it is better to never let your components reach such high temperatures in systems designed for ambient measurements. We can also optimize our layout to help our sensor better exchange heat with the ambient environment. In cases where you expect low humidity from the environment, or where the total life of the system is not a major concern, the solder mask layer covering the traces around the sensing element can be removed to allow the copper traces to directly exchange heat with the ambient environment. In general, if you follow the proper layout considerations, it is not necessary to add additional copper pores around the sensor. The exception to this are packages with thermal pads. In the case of these packages, it can be beneficial from a response time perspective to increase a copper pad under the device, connected to the sensor's die attached pad with a via. This copper pad does not need to be bigger than the dimensions of the package or even the dimensions of the thermal pad. For sensors without thermal pads, don't worry about adding additional copper. The additional thermal mass of the copper does not improve response time enough when connected only to the sensor's leads. Thank you for watching this video on measuring ambient temperature.